Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this black teapot with some flowers coming out the top. Maybe a little butterfly too, if we have time. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man and chat tonight for our live show. So if you've got questions, you can ask those and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. All right, I'm using a 9 by 12 inch canvas tonight. Welcome. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Glad you've joined us. Hopefully, uh, this is, if it's your first time, you'll stay and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, this is a Frederick's Mixed Media Canvas Board, so it's like a little bit um, smooth. That's the kind of uh, canvases that I like, so if you don't have... Um, this fancy canvas. You can maybe coat yours with a little bit of gesso to smooth it out a little bit before you paint, but um, anyhow, that helps. Um, I have painted mine with a little bit of burnt sienna, just uh, maybe about a quarter size, right in the middle here, spray it down with some water, and then used a paper towel to wipe it, and I wiped it vertically so that it kind of had some streaks going. That gives it a nice light coat, gives it a nice ground for the background, and I've traced transferred on, um, or not transferred on, but uh, drawn with just regular chalk um, on here to kind of get us an idea of where we're putting our teapot. It's very tall, so it's like probably twice as tall, like the bottom two thirds is teapot, and then the top uh, little section here is the flowers coming down. I saw this um, in a, a store. I wish I'd bought it. <laughs> I did not buy it. I may have to go back and look for it because it was so cool looking. Um, but anyhow, I took a picture of it and we're going to use it for our painting tonight. And I think I've done um, four, uh, I think three or four other uh, ones in this teapot series already, but they were on uh, square canvases. So this one's kind of divergent because it's so tall. I think that I'm going to make this one a little bit looser. So I think I'm going to do kind of more of an impressionist style on this one and just kind of do blocks of color instead of like a lot of detail. Um, I think that that'll lend itself to this, um, this landscape or this, you know, portrait style, um, canvas. So we'll see. Um, so for the looser paintings, I like to use my Aspen brushes because I'm going to use a little bit thicker, heavy body acrylics, um, and they really help push the paint around. So I've got several different sizes of rounds and filberts. Um, just grab what you have. It doesn't have to be the same as what I have, um, but uh, that's what I'm going to be using. I'll mention them as I go. And I also have a, one of my favorite little brushes for leaves and things like that. That's the angle shader here in the Velvet Touch from Princeton. So these are the Princeton Aspen series um, brushes. And this little one here is the 6100 series. So anyhow, and then you're going to want some sort of a scruffy old brush just to do some streaks in the wood grain. Uh, and that's what we're, well, where we'll start to add our um, little bit more detail in the background, not a ton. Um, it's not going to be our focal point. We'll, we'll put most of the, the detail in our vase and flowers. Let's go over our colors. I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow, cadmium yellow light, Indian yellow shade, which is a little bit more orangey tone of yellow. Um, this one is pyral orange, or you could use cadmium red light. Quinacridone magenta, that's a, a attempted murderer in our, I'll show you that later. Um, <laughs> that's some crime going on in our studio behind my back. Um, Doxazine purple, uh, ultramarine blue, uh, phthalo green, yellow shade, uh, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and gloss glazing liquid. And my titanium white looks weird because I was trying to scoop it out, get all the last little bits out with a thin um, pellet knife out of the top of my tube. So that's why it looks like that. All right, let's, um, I'll show you the murder scene later. Um, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> it's quite interesting <laughs> what happened. All right, so um, all I wanna do here is just add a few streaks behind, just a little bit more detail. Uh, but I don't want the streaks to go, I want the vertical, these streaks to go vertical and then I want some down here that'll be a little bit lighter to go this way. So I'm gonna use a little bit of painter's tape um, and just section off where I want that to be. And it's going to be kind of right about where the handle 
comes out just maybe just a little bit above that so right in there and try to get it straight doesn't have to be but just kind of straight and don't stick it to the back of your canvas especially on these because it'll tear that paper right off I've done that before the art I learned that the hard way okay um, if we're anything we're just kind of helping you uh, not do what we've done stupidly <laughs> We're a, we're a lesson for, I, what is that saying? I can't remember. Our life uh, is a uh, lesson. And is what an not example to, do. to others of what not to do? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the exact thing. Uh, all right, so I am grabbing just a tiny touch of burnt umber and burnt sienna on here. Don't need a lot. And then I grabbed some glaze. And I'm just going to lightly streak through. I don't want to really blend. I'll end up blending those two together together if I do too much on here. But I think that's going to do. And I'm just going to very lightly kind of draw it down. Whoops. Towards me. Or away. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as we kind of keep it vertical. And go back and forth. You can use a bigger brush if you don't want these to be. Sit. Like if you're starting. If you're seeing like obvious lines uh, between each section. I'm trying to kind of overlap them a little bit so that I'm not, and I'm erasing my whole drawing here. So you get to see my draw it after all. <laughs> I was just kind of mainly trying to get an idea of if it would fit on this canvas. So that's why I was drawing it ahead of time. And I'm going a little darker at the top too. I think that's going to be good. It doesn't take much to get that wood tone and I'm I'm gonna get the glaze instead of water because I don't want this brush to get water in it. It just doesn't do well when it's wet. These hog bristle brushes they like to get soggy if you get water in them so I don't want it to get soggy. I want it to stay nice and crisp for me so that I can get good lines. All right, definitely erase the entire <laughs> background there of our drawing. That's okay. Well, at least you got the base still. Yeah. That's what it's all about. True. <laughs> all about that base. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I walked right into that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, all about that what? <laughs> oh, yeah. No trouble. <laughs> okay. That's a, we're dating ourselves. That's an older, oldie. It's like, what, two years old, three years old? No, it's longer than that, because I saw her sing that in Memphis, so it's been at least oh. five or six years. Oh, man, you you are old. Jeez, <laughs> five years, oh, my gosh. Shut, shut up. All right. <laughs> That's hey, <true>. Boomer. Boomer. <laughs> Don't start. Okay, so there we go. Nice crisp line there. And if we wanted to be fancy, we could do another, uh, let this dry and do this over that part, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to use this and maybe a little bit of the unbleached titanium this time and just go over what I've already got here. Maybe a little bit more of the burnt umber. And again, don't over blend it. I just want a little bit in here. Uh, it's actually kind of a yellow tone, so if you wanted to get grab some of that yellow oxide, I uh, didn't put it out, but you could probably use that too. I might just get a little bit of Indian yellow just to warm it up. And we're just going to go over it this way. sure I get it all covered. My initial coat didn't cover it all the way, so. All right, and I want a little bit more of that unbleached titanium, a little bit more of that yellow. I think those two together with these browns is making a nice yellowish, light yellowish color. But I need it to be brighter. So I'm going to do it on this side, and then we'll put a little shadow on that side. So I need a little bit more. Just need it to 
show some streaks. It's not wanting to. There we go. Okay, I think that'll be good enough, and I'll come back in here with a smaller brush and just add a little more detail to the corner there, but I think that'll be good enough, and we'll let that dry. It's mostly dry now. I think I should be able to work with it, hopefully. We'll have to have Mark dry it for us. So the bottom of this comes almost to the bottom of the canvas here so and it's pretty well centered maybe just slightly offset for to give room for the handle because I think that handle is a little bit wider than the yeah the handle is just a little bit wider than the teapot body so it's gonna round up like that and I'm keeping it pretty narrow I like the I want to emphasize this really tall vase I'd like that's when the what drew me to it in the first place and like I said we want the flowers to be coming out of the top third so if we kind of just go like this kind of split that and make sure I've got about the same amount of space at the top of where I'm going to put my flowers I think we're good so just split like this section into three if that makes sense from the bottom of this to the top right here split that into three parts maybe right here, something like that. And then we know kind of where to put our top of our base is gonna be right there, okay? And then if we figure out where the middle of our vase is and just put a vertical line, then we can round this out and make sure that we keep these sides sort of symmetrical. And they narrow as they come up. So something like that. I might even narrow it down a little bit more at the bottom there, but I think that'll do. And then our handle, the shape there, look at the, don't look at the actual handle, look at the shape that's happening in the wood. That'll help you get that handle shape right. So it's like a D. Um, it comes out quite a bit and back down. And then it widens at the top here. And it kind of comes out like that. And then it has a little bump right there where it attaches to. So something like that. I think I'm gonna narrow this down a little bit more even. Hopefully I didn't Hopefully my paint is not too wet here, but I think I'm gonna narrow this on either side just a little bit more. Tuck right in here. Really emphasize that narrowness of it. And if you have a like a tall canvas, I almost did this on like an eight by 16 or, or 10 by 20. I think that this would be one that would look really good, good on something like that. On, a, on a, one of those canvases that's really narrow and tall. But I think we'll make it work. All right, so something like that. We're not seeing the top of it necessarily all the way. Just wanting to make sure that I'm getting these symmetrical. I'm going a little closer on in on this side. Something like that. This will be fun too because we've got lots of vertical lines in this vase that we'll be able to use to emphasize that tallness of it too. So I think that's good. And I think then the look at where look across at where the handle is or the spout is how far out it's going so it's going out pretty far somewhere in here and then this shape here between it is kind of a v shape right there that we're seeing in the look at the wood and not the handle 
and see what that shape is. That'll help you draw it. It comes all the way down to right in here. Like if you go straight across, it's just below the apex of this handle that comes out. So, and that's a little bit more pointy even than I have it there. Okay. Love this style. I just love this mid-century type style of everything. So cool. Reminds me of growing up in Palm Springs. That's You saw this everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My grandma's house was this <laughs> kind of stuff. Just very this is my childhood. And I never, I don't know, I just, I don't think they've beat it. It's just pretty cool. Okay. So I'm going to lower that down just a little bit. And I probably offset it a little too much, but I, I do have about the same amount of distance between, that's what I want to look at here. Just, just for me, I, I like to kind of have even... And I've got something symmetrical like this, but really, honestly, it wouldn't matter if it was way over here. We could bring over our flowers um, and have this dramatic swoop here, or put something down here to balance it. So it um, doesn't have to be perfect. All right, there's a big anemone flower right here that I want to do. There's a zinnia, a zinnia that kind of overlaps. There's a butterfly right here. And its shape is kind of like this. And then there's Cosmo, 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 Delphinium, or Larkspur, uh, more Larkspur, Delphinium type of shape. Some stock up here, white, white, more Delphiniums, some big Xenia right here, and some, I can't tell what that is. And some other stuff coming down here. So I think that that'll do us. There's some stock coming down here. Might tuck it behind. Tuck some stuff coming behind the vase handle too. Just want to have some movement and kind of this explosion of fun stuff coming out the top. All right, that's good. 21 minutes just to get there. All right, we need to get going here. <laughs> it's gonna be a big night on Oak Island. Messing around, I know. I can't miss it. There's not gonna. They're not gonna find anything again. Or they are they? They're gonna find some sticks. They. <laughs> Jack's gonna get all excited about something. <laughs> Jack's our favorite. Mm -hmm. They find a little tiny piece of clay pot, and he's like, "Is this what they held the treasure in? You know, everything, <laughs> everything. It's great. He's a, he's awesome. Everything. Oak Oak Island." Not for quitters. Maybe treasures in this <laughs> in this teapot here. What? Maybe there's treasure in this teapot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You never know. Okay, I'm gonna use that burnt umber, and I'm just gonna go here and just kind of smudge it along that line there, across there. Just kind of dirty it up back there, where the line of the background goes vertical separating the horizontal from vertical right there just a little bit darker right there that just gives it kind of depth and there's some shadows and things that we don't need to put in because it's just me you know and other things that were next to the pot that we can't see so it doesn't really matter and I'm just gonna kind of wrangle in a coat of light shadow up here for the handle and that's about all we're gonna do for the shadow on there maybe go a little bit darker under there probably a lot darker actually but that's I'm gonna wipe this out I'm just gonna try to smudge out that edge of the shadow so that it's not obvious I don't want a hard line unless it's like really bright daylight and you have like a really crisp line even then sometimes there'll be a little bit of faded edge to it so always kind of make sure you're fading out your smudges there all right so let's get some black 
for our vase. I'm going to do the vase in shades of black, purple, and blue, I think, and maybe a little bit of brown. Um, but there's a lot going on in it, and most of it is just all this vertical stuff. So I think I'm just going to start by making sure that I have a good drawing on it. You know, we've got a lot of smudges going on and a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to kind of do my main lines on it. Go a little bit wider. There we go. On either side, just making sure I've got a good, good line on it. And I'm using the four filbert in the aspen for this. Now, if you're having trouble controlling it, because it can be a little squirrely, um, getting you know straight lines with a filbert. I'm just using the edge of it though and just kind of drawing it down. Um, but you can use a flat brush or you know whatever works for you. All right and I'm just going to streak some of this black down the middle but most of the rest of this vase is actual colors. Just shades of gray and black and blues and things. So I'm just going to kind of soften off the bottom there and any other lines towards the inside and we're going to add the rest of this with all kinds of fun little streaks and things all right but i am going to get a little bit more for the handle and do the handle and sometimes that chalk will kind of keep the paint like from adhering so sometimes you need to add a little bit of water to your paint just to kind of help counteract that chalk that first pass is usually kind of iffy and then it'll start sticking and this is actually kind of got a rounded bit there where it attaches but I think we're good good enough and there's some light blue but I'm not I'll just put that over the top of this black I think I'll do the handle in black because there's it's mostly black everywhere and then love this one so I don't I can't even tell you I'm so excited I can't I can't I like I saw this and I there's sometimes when I you know I don't know if you guys are like this but there's sometimes when I'm like passing something or like I take a picture of something and I'm like I am definitely painting that now I have a lot of paintings or a lot of photos that I haven't actually painted so when I get I only get to paint one that I was like really excited about I'm always like enthusiastic <laughs> more than it probably warrants but I think some of it is just because I found this photo myself you know it's like one of my own finds as soon as I saw it I was like yep we're painting that mm -hmm. definitely I'm not taking you home I, t I don't know why I didn't it was only like 20 something dollars too maybe maybe 30 but it wasn't that expensive either and I definitely would have used it for flowers but I already had a black vase so I kind of talked myself out of it because I was like well I don't need it and then now I'm having non-buyer's remorse <laughs> Maybe it's still there. Maybe. I doubt it, but maybe. Kind of don't love that, but I think that's good enough. It's all right. I think I, I got that a little bit bigger than it, it is, but we're all right. We'll live with it. All right, and then this, I want to get this right on this side. It's a little higher comes in a little higher than this bottom of that.
And then let's just go ahead and I think we got the drawing pretty good. Sometimes sometimes I'll go by my drawing and sometimes I won't. Like this one I brought brought it out right here. I'm not going to do that. Um you know, sometimes I get painting and once I see it on canvas, I'm like, nope, not quite. Oh, fun. Okay. This is very groovy. We should have the lava limes on. I don't know. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. Something. I mean, really, we're not that far from the next mid-century, so... True. Wow. That's scary. <laughs> in, in fact, we're closer to it than we were the last yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I... I... I can't remember what the... What the... Uh, statistic was it was something like 1980 something was is as far distant from where we're at now than it was to 1940 or I can't remember but it was like some weird statistics and I was like that's scary <laughs> yeah it's wow it does 40, not seem that long ago because we lived it but 44 years ago mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yep okay um blue, ultramarine blue, and I'm going to make it just slightly more teal by adding a little touch of green. I didn't put out the phthalo blue, but you could do that if you want to. I didn't think I would need it for just this little bit. Just wanted a little bit more of a turquoisey, and I'm going to get a lot of white. And just when I want to add white to a color, I don't add it to the whole thing. I just add it to a corner. I just pick up a little bit of it and use what's left on my brush and just add it. And that way I don't have to add the whole thing of white because otherwise I would just be adding more and more white to it. So just pick up a little bit of white, mix it off to the side here, we're good. And we're gonna start to add some streaks with this. And I think I want a little bit of glaze just to kind of help that paint go on a little bit more smoothly. Right, and then I want some darker streaks. And I'm gonna get some of that black and I'm gonna put the black in as well. So I'm just going to kind of use the corner of that brush and over here I'm gonna get a little bit of purple and use some of that mid-dark. It's adding a little bit of white to it because I had that white light blue on here, but I'm, it's gonna be fine. So down here I might do some purple and get a little bit more of that black down here. So each time I add a little bit more black, it's going to gray, just create a darker gray version of whatever I had in my brush. And I'm not going to overthink it, but just kind of get a get a lot of streaks going here. I'm gonna get more of that blue, maybe a little bit more ultramarine blue, a little bit of the black, and do this whole section right here with that. Just always kind of pulling down. It's not at the, I don't ever like, you know, section out each exact section that I'm going to do a color that you could you could go through here and draw in all of the exact shapes that you're seeing and then just paint that but I just didn't generally like to kind of fiddle with it until it looks good to me so uh, adding some of that burnt sienna because even though this is black it is reflecting the colors around it so that table color might show up a little bit Love it. Let's get a little bit of this light blue and just kind of do a few little kind of curved ones where the bottom is coming down. Maybe a couple little shapes there. All right. 
And then let's get some more of that lighter blue. And just kind of find the middle of this and pull down. And then I'm gonna kind of come on either side of that and push it around a little bit. Wipe my brush off because it's got a lot of paint on it. Pick up some of this bluish purple that I had. That's sort of a little mid mid or mid tone, midder tone, <laughs> mid tone. A little bit of blue and purple. Yeah. Kind of quick question. Okay. I want to know uh, what color could they use if they don't have a green gold. Oh, I I'm not using green gold tonight, okay. so. Yeah, it's on the list, but I I that's um, kind of the list of my basic palette I just haven't yeah I didn't I didn't edit it for tonight it's kind of the d default palette color and I have to go in and edit it down so I'll do that after the show but she was dealing with the crime scene she didn't have time I was dealing it. with the crime scene <laughs> here let me show you here's the victim he's still bleeding out I'm trying to I'm trying to wound cover his Same. wound, but he yeah. has this huge gash right here in it, and <clears throat> we think that this is the murderer or <laughs> the attacker. <laughs> the attacker, <laughs> Quinacker down the corner here. He used his little uh, corner to yeah gash him. Gash him. <laughs> You did a nice, nice job of it too. It's pretty, pretty well cut. That's, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I've never had that happen before. So I must have been a little too forceful when I was <laughs> jamming that color down in my, in my uh, little storage thing that I keep them in. I have a little turning rack that they all sit in and usually they get along just fine but I don't know what that cadmium did but quinacridone was not having it he shanked him get a little bit more blue yeah that's there's the crime scene right there that's right in here <laughs> happened all right so there's like a highlight right there and I am finding this brush can be a little bit difficult to control so I'm having to kind of go back through and soften up so you could probably use a smaller brush for some of these littler bits like this um, for these little teeny tiny highlights so like right in here Got a little highlight there and got a little highlight there where they're attaching, attaching, attaching. And you could dry brush too, so you don't have to use as much paint as I'm using. You could kind of do it in a dry brush method, like that's what I'm doing here. It's working just fine too. It's actually a little bit easier to control probably. Getting a little bit more of that light blue. I don't know why I did it that close to the edge. It's not that close. I'm going to get that black and kind of bring that back in right there. But that looks pretty close to where I want it to be. I'm going to let this dry and I'll add some more streaks and things to it here in a little bit. But I think for the most part, we've got that pretty close to where we want to be. I'm going to just kind of soften off that edge there. All right. I got a little tiny bit of black right there. Just want to get that off before it dries. Okay. Use my paper towel, wipe off my chalk, make sure your black is dry before you do this, but my edges are dry, my inside's not. So 
There we go. So there's our vase. Looking good. And I definitely need to add some darker darks in here. You can see it kind of looks a little flat. And so I think I'll add a little bit more contrast with the brighter um, highlights in just a few places and more of my dark darks. I, I did notice right here kind of got a little, um, a little lost. So I'm gonna kind of put in that bright highlight that's right there. Come on. Yeah, this is probably not the best brush for this because it's not one to give me like a good straight line. But I did see so many rounded ends like this one was kind of rounded, so I wanted to use the filbert, but I probably would have done better to hold it at an angle and that way I could get better straight lines. But this is this kind of angle going up this way and trying to do a straight line is not easy, no, not easy to control. So, okay, that's good. And maybe down in here, there's a little bit of, I get some yellow. Put in a little bit of that. And there's some like magenta even down in here. It looks like a drip, drip vase, but it's not. It was just a shiny black. It's just picking up all these colors. I'm going to get the black again. This is the darkest black. And I'm going to go back over. Just add a little bit of that black. really dark. This will help give us the contrast that we are lacking right now. Dry brushing in some places. Okay, good. Also use purple here if you don't want to use just straight black. Purple would work just fine too right here for this. Just want to darken it up and make it really, really intensely dark right here. Just in a few places. I don't want to cover up all these kind of nice mid-tones and things that we've got going on, but just a few places where we need that really dark. really dark color. Okay, that's looking good. Fitz Pickle is loving the snow. Hope you guys are staying staying warm. He likes wearing his little jackets. It's so cute. He comes in and he doesn't want to take it off. He likes it's cozy. And he goes he just goes romping around. This is our dog I'm talking about. Goes romping around in the snow. He's got he's a cavapoo, so he's got like hair between his toes, which makes him very ninja. Like you can't hear him coming, can't hear him on the on the hardwood floors at all. He can come right up behind you. You never know, all the time. Um, but it protects his feet in the snow too, so he doesn't feel it, I guess, as much. Of course, he doesn't stay out for long, long, but he is cute in the snow. I've been enjoying, enjoying it. All right. It's only good because we haven't lost power or anything. Because <laughs> if we lost power, I'd be cursing it, cursing it. Got some fun. All right, getting some white here. Dabbing it on some white. Just bright highlights, just in a few places. That light blue down here. Just getting a little bit more intense coverage. 
kind of kind of what was there was sort of the mid tones and I'm just adding the lightest highlights that's already there this one's can have just a little bit more white like maybe right in the middle of that area and there's just like some little small streaks of white all right and I'm gonna call that good and I might mess with a little bit more but we'll see after we get our flowers on but for now I think it's good enough all right let's get going on some flowers so I'm gonna keep the same brush it seems to be about the right size for what I'm needing and um, I need to put some dark up through here so that our flowers have something to play off of. So I'm just going to get some purple and my green. I like this combo because it makes a really intensely dark green without um, dulling it. It's really pretty and vibrant. So I'm going to leave room for my Xenia to go right here. I'm just going to put out some leafy shapes sort of in the middle here where coming out of my vase and coming out. I think that's good enough right there. I didn't put it over my Xenia because it's just too dark such a light colored flower um, all right so just look at what's behind everything else so the stuff that's underneath is the larkspur and the stalk and some of the stuff up here cosmos are on top right here butterfly on top um, top top so the we'll start with the larkspur and stuff um, larkspur delphinium they are different, but they look pretty much the same on the vine or on the plant. They're, they have different kind of leaves though, but the flowers are very, very similar. Oh, I can't really tell. If this is my garden, it's Larkspur because we had a lot of lar Larkspur in our garden. I think it's Larkspur. This is either, yeah, this is all out of her garden. Yeah, it is actually, all of this. Okay. So getting ultramarine blue and ultramarine blue and white, just a little bit of white. That'll just help make it a little bit more opaque and a little bit easier to see against this dark background. I'm just gonna kind of start using the, the shape of the brush to create the little leafy bits. I'll connect them with some greenery here, but something like that. It's pretty. And we'll do some up here. And the flowers, I'm just kind of kind of pressing down maybe two, one or two times, and that's good enough to get that flower shape. Just with the tip out so that you're getting making use of that rounded shape on the flower. So something like that. Like it. So we've got this and this kind of cupping around. We could maybe bring this down just a little bit more out side here or I think I think I'll bring I I think I might just Put it over the top right here. I think it'll be fine to just bring some leaves over the top right here. Um, and then there's a little bit more up here. So it's kind of curving down. Three is good. Good number. I like how this blue really pops off against this orangey background, and it? it's really pretty. I'm gonna get some green and I don't need a lot actually probably have more than I need there um, and let's make a light green get some cadmium yellow and ending yellow hue and that'll make a really bright 
yellow green and if I take most of that out of my brush and just grab some of both of these yellows again I will end up with a color fairly close to green gold you can just add a little bit more of that green back in until I get it where it's close to that color um, if you want it a little bit more neutral you could add a burnt sienna or tiny touch of burnt sienna or something like that too but I think this will do and if I want to make it a little bit more opaque I'm going to add a little tiny bit of white to it so I've got a couple greens here that I can use and I'm going to Maybe get a little bit of this darker green just to start with and press my brush flat so I can get a little blade of whatever and I'm just going to tap in little leafy shapes there for where the larkspur is attached. Just in between. That's all you need to do. And then I'm going to use this brighter green. I'm just going to tap in and make the stalk. So that's the, the tip of the stalk has that kind of little <clears throat> little buds happening. We'll do it like that. And then as it gets down here, it'll um, get wider. And then there's a little bit of it here. So this is what I think I'm going to bring over this. Curl it in a little bit. Make sure you're done with your teapot before I do this. I'm going to get kind of a little bit of two tones on my brush. So I have more than one green on here so that I'm getting some interesting plays of color. Just doing like that and then leaving room for some white. That'll be good. And then I think I'll bring some down here. Just do like a, a leaf or two. Something coming down this way. That way kind of hides the where the vase attaches. Get some of that purple and do some of that purple green color on our leaf. There. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then there's going to be some darker green where the flowers attach. I'm just going to kind of connect that green with darker green in between. Okay, good. Again, keep it simple. We don't have to overdo. Our eye's gonna fill in all these details for us. So we're just having to kind of get the shapes, general color and shape right, and your eye will interpret all of these as flowers, no problem. I'm going to get some lighter blue now and I'm going to press my brush flat so I have a good bladed edge and I'm just going to kind of find some of these and just kind of set it down and pull it in to create some highlights on my leaves and are my my flowers I mean the larkspur and maybe get another, like a mid-tone or a darker tone even. And kind of add some with that too. So it's not just like light, we got like three 
values happen in here. Okay, set it down and just kind of lift, just dabbing, using the shape of the brush to do all the work for us. Only just trying to hint at the shape of those flowers and just give some highlights. If you want to pay attention to where your light's coming from and get, you know, do some of these darker like on the bottom here and some of the lighter at the top where the light would be hitting it, that's always good too. So paying attention to that can help create a more realistic looking thing. But just look at your scene too. You can see from, you know, the flowers that are in your pictures where the light's hitting them. So maybe some of these are getting a lot of light on the top and then there's a little bit less intense light at, towards the bottom. Okay, I like how they're kind of curled around like that too. I think I'm gonna bring this one out a little bit more. Just want it to kind of come down a little bit more right there. And I might even bring this one down a little bit more too. Okay. Very good. Let's do our stock. That's going to be, actually this might not be stock, this might be, those look like they're um, ooh, snapdragons. Yeah, I think that's what they are. I wasn't I'm not very it's a little too hot in Arkansas for not stock they don't do all that well because our growing season by the time it gets going it just goes hot you know it's like it's like it just starts and then it's just hot <laughs> immediately it's like everything just starts to grow and then it kills it all so if it's like a flower that doesn't like the heat these the snapdragons love it here. They did great all the way through the summer. Zinnias love it. They're one of my best flowers. And they just can't be stopped. So I'm making just kind of a creamy white with my two yellows and a little bit of white. That's all. Nothing fancy. I'm just kind of trying to see where I'm seeing the color in here. There's not a ton of colors, mostly white. There is a little bit of creaminess to it, and the shapes are, obviously the Snapdragon have like kind of two, two sides, and they're kind of ruffled and kind of facing each other, um, kind of out this way, actually. They kind of do like that. So um, I'm kind of trying to sort of get that shape, just, but, you know, again, your eye will do the work, so we don't have to get too fussy with it. Something like that. I don't know that I love that going in front of my vase, but it's it's there now, so I don't know. You did that Saturday with the mountains. What did I do? Put the flowers in front of it and then you're like, oh man, I like that mountain. I did like that mountain, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll show that. We worked on this. I, did, I do wish that I had made this a little bit more blurry back here, too. I, I feel like I made all of this a little dark for being... But this is a new series that we're doing with flower frame uh, landscapes. So we'll do like a landscape in the flower frames. This was our $5 bonus video that we did on Saturday. So we'll be continuing those um, in the bonus videos this year. Um, don't know how many we'll do, but at least two more. I like to do series of three at least when I do a series. This one, obviously, we're out of control now at this point. We're just going rogue. Gonna just keep going because I love it so much. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. All right, gonna do kind of equal parts blue and um, ultramarine. Oh, ultramarine and purple, I mean. Um, and let's go ahead and do the shape. So just looking at the shape of this anemone. These were bulbs and they were 
very hard to, they did not want to come up. They did not want to bloom. And then when they did, they were really pretty. Finally got like four or five flowers for what I paid and for the amount of work and effort, they were not worth it. So they never came back. They just, I think they got killed off by the frost. I don't know if I was supposed to lift them, get them out or what, but I was like, well, good riddance. I put poppies there and they, they were no fuss. They didn't care. <laughs> they were like, yep, yeah, we're good. And the poppies did great getting white some of that just yellow that I just had and I'm just going to pull out from the center into that wet paint and create that kind of highlighted area that's in the middle of it I love these I wish they were not so finicky they probably just didn't like our I don't know we might have watered them too much I have no idea but I was like I'm not going to even worry about it they were not I'm a lazy gardener. Yes, me too. I'm like, it's dirt. It's a seed. <laughs> Here's some water. <coughs> if you don't like it, go grow, elsewhere. <laughs> grow, dang it. That's about right. <laughs> Why are you not growing? <laughs> That's exactly it. They're like, do I have to baby you? I don't have time for this. Grow up. <laughs> look, look, look at all the stuff in the woods out there all by itself growing just fine. <laughs> And I'm helping you, and you you're still not growing. To, I'm giving you water and everything you need. I'm making some teal here. This is just going to give us a filler shade, filler color here. I like it. I and like it. If we have issues where, like, one year we'll have just a just abundance of something. Right. Like Bumper one year, crop. We had pumpkins, like, oh my we gosh. Had like 60 pumpkins. It so was many pumpkins. Just stupid. Yeah. And the next year, one. One. <laughs> one. I have no idea what we did different. What? We didn't put it in the bed. I think that's what it it right. didn't like that we were putting it on the ground. Yeah, we didn't put it. It with wanted all the to other... be in the special bed, yeah. but it didn't stay in the bed. But it had right. to. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the problem. So we might try that again and give it a space in the bed. Yeah. We have raised beds, so it didn't want to stay in the raised bed. So we're like, okay, we'll put you on the ground. No, it didn't want to be in the on the ground. It wanted to be. In the raised bed, it wanted to go where it wanted to go. Right. The pumpkin, <laughs> the one, the, the one that we had that one year, that first year, I think we had two plants maybe. Yeah. Two plants that survived. It was at least forty feet of pumpkin because it oh. wrapped itself around all the way. We have four four rows of beds, and three rosy. So twelve yeah. row, yeah, twelve did. beds that were like six foot each. It, it had it had to be closer to eighty feet. Yeah, it, to, it probably to, yeah. To yeah yeah yeah. You're right. Now that I'm saying that it, math, it, it, it went one direction and it went the other direction. I had and to wrapped fold it, around. I had to fold it back so I could mow the grass. And yeah, it just kept unbelievable. going. Unbelievable. But anyways. Yeah. So. But then it, last year nothing. Yeah. And and so yeah, you're like man, I am the <laughs> I am the best farmer in the world in the history of all farmers look at me i'm killing it over here Just, i'm a regular johnny apples i'm making teal with the ultramarine blue and green here and adding white i don't know if i mentioned that so i'm sorry i'm yeah. just talking about plants but yeah we're... and then reality sets in <laughs> yeah we realize we have very little to do with what's happening in our garden <laughs> The plants just get together and decide what they're going to do. And we just kind of are like, yep, for okay. Fortunately, the world population isn't counting on us to grow food for no. them because mm -mm. we'd starve. Yeah. Oh, man, I had the best year for tomatoes last year. So many tomatoes. And I was so sick I couldn't eat them. Pre-surgery. Give away pre-surgery. I could not eat them. And, yeah, so this year I will probably get two. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> if i'm lucky all right we'll see all right let's well let's go back to what we're doing here sorry guys all right divergent all right so the one last little bit of like background is some purpley i don't know what it is i can't really tell um this one is butterfly bush that's coming out this way so we'll do a little bit of that um, it's kind of a lavender so I'm gonna just get some of those 
purple that was in this. It's always good to like reuse. You can see that I'm like reusing colors that I've already used. That's always really smart when you're doing a painting like this that has so many colors because that way everything will kind of relate to each other a little bit um, better. And you won't have like one color that's just way off and looks weird. So adding this magenta, which is kind of a new color. We haven't used it yet. So I'm just adding some of this purple that we've already used, the ultramarine blue and purple, doxazine purple mixture from this flower into it to give me a really pretty pink. And I've got two versions of it, one a little bit darker than the other. And I'm just going to kind of get both of them on my brush here. And we're just going to tap in some colors. So I need to leave room right here for this Xenia. So I'll put it in here, I think, and just kind of tap in this little butterfly bush. These are great and they're perennials. So they come back every year. I love them. And one of them died from the frost. I'm hoping that the frost doesn't kill them off. This We didn't cover them. So we'll see. We may not have any left this year. We had so much cold. We will see what survives yeah. five degrees. Yeah. I'm not, not holding out much hope for these ones. We'll see. Getting some more magenta, just a little bit darker. And just put it in here. And these are kind of just made up of tiny little flowers that are all clustered together. I'm going to make this one a butterfly bush, even if it's not one, because I, it's kind of the same color, and I don't think it is but in the picture, but I, I can't tell what it is, so I'm not going to worry about it. And then I'm going to get some green, if there's any left. There's some green. And dab it on the top. Coming out the top. Okay. Fun. This is therapeutic. Don't overthink it. Have fun with it, please. Please, please, please. I always hate when I, not hate, but you know, I mean, I like it when you guys um, paint along ever, but I always feel bad when I, you know, somebody's like, this one was so much hard, so hard, you know. So pick paintings that are in your, comfort level and just slightly challenging so that way you're not going to be struggling through I think this one is fairly easy so I think this one is definitely on the lower end of the beginner scale um, I wouldn't hesitate doing this with a class of beginners like I think that we could get through it just fine together um, and so I think if you follow along and just kind of trust the process as we go through, I think you could, I think you can do this. I have faith in you. This one's not, not particularly hard and I'm trying to keep the flowers very simple, simplified so that it is kind of beginner friendly. You can see that so far all of our leaves and flowers and everything have just been dabbing using the same brush. Just little dabs of color. So we're gonna have a large flower here. I'm gonna do a little stem out to where my Cosmo is going here. Gonna have one here. And then this one is going to be in here and it's not gonna have anything out to it. Okay, that's pretty good. This salmon color is one of my favorites. This one that I'm gonna do here. One of my favorite flower colors. And there's, um, I, I can't, I think it was called Salmon. Can't remember the name of the, might be Oklahoma. I cannot remember. I have to get out my seed packets. <clears throat> but. Yeah, we did. Oh, it was not. It was not good to do on camera because <laughs> it was such a mess. I need to get them out and organize them again because I got. I pull them out the ones I want to use, and then I, I forget to put them back in. So I think they're kind of in different places. All right. So 
I got it way more yellow than I need, but I'm going to start there and, well, maybe not, um, use a little bit of this burnt sienna, a little bit of magenta, and I'm going to use it to create this large zinnia. And now look at the overall shape. Don't look at the, you know, you get caught in the details right at first, but if you just kind of look at the overall shape, we've got all this nice stuff around it. It's going to be good. All right, that's pretty good color. Now I'm going to go darker in the center, so I'm going to get some magenta and burnt sienna, and maybe even a little tiny bit of purple, and do the center dark. Even though this is a yellow flower, if you look really closely in between where you're seeing the dark areas, it's it's really dark. It's even darker than I have it here. So I'm going to get a little bit more of that dark and just do it really dark right there. Okay, so we'll leave that to dry. We'll come back and add a few highlights and it'll come together like that. Just a few dabs of yellow and we'd be done with that one. So we'll do the same thing with these salmon ones. So I'm going to get a little bit of my pyrrol orange and my magenta. And really, um, I could have probably used a red here. I could have used my, maybe that's why my cadmium red was trying to tell me that it wanted to be used. I don't know. Or that's why the magenta shanked it. Because it was like, no. <laughs> It's my, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, who knows? But, okay, so there we go. There's our salmon. So pretty much equal parts of those two plus white. And we're getting that salmon color. Really pretty. Um, and then if I want it less light, which this is pretty light, um, I'll have to add uh, less white. But I'm just going to go ahead and kind of dab it on where I think I'm going to want it to go. And right in here. Get that shape. Look at the shape. Not the details. Look at just the overall outline of it. What's around it. That's well, pretty much a circle there. And then there's another one. And I'm going to get a little bit more of these two and just... See if I can get a darker color to do for this one. And maybe I'll put this one, yeah, maybe it's like right here. Which is kind of where it is in the picture. I don't know why I'm acting like I'm changing it. But maybe we'll do it right here. It's exactly where it's in the picture. I know. Where, where she gonna we're going to decide. What's she going to do? I don't know. <laughs> did not see that coming. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just making that real dramatic for no reason. <laughs> well. Okay. Um, there's more of the salmon color up in here where the... But I'm kind of running out of space. I don't have room for all of the flowers. So I may bring some down. Um, I could put... Some of them coming down in here. This is where my butterfly is going to be, though, so I probably don't want to do it right here. I've got the cosmos out here, so I could bring some out behind the cosmos, and I think that's what I'll do. I'll just kind of put some of these out here like that. I just liked a little bit more of that color. And then the yellow, the pale yellow that goes with them. These are the snapdragons that are the salmon colored ones. They're so pretty. All right, so that's good. That's good. I might put some of this in this one instead of doing just white, I might put a little bit of this color, just a tiny blush of that pink there. Very nice. 
and then I did notice there is a little bit of color this color coming down here so I'll go ahead and do a little bit of that coming off of there and maybe that's like status or something that's nice okay and there is some let's go ahead and do just something right there where that was supposed to be just a little bit so which <coughs> which brush is this this is the four filbert number four it's filbert. doing doing most of these flowers for me in the no aspen problem. right what? In the Aspen? Uh, yes, Aspen. Gonna get a little tiny bit of green here with my Indian yellow and some white. And just use that to add little dabs in between here. Maybe that was this. I didn't ever finish that off, so that can be that coming up behind there. Okay, I need to get a little bit of bright pink, and I think I'm going to get a round brush now. This will give me a little bit more control when I do my small petals and my Cosmos. So I'm going to grab my two round. Uh, I might go back to this for my Cosmos. I don't know. We'll see. Actually, I have this, this filbert here that's a two, so that one might be better. No, this one might be better for the cosmos. I'm gonna use this one for, what was I gonna do? Oh, some of this smaller detail in here. Um, and I wanna add some highlights to the pink over here. So I'm gonna get white and just a little bit of that pink so it stays really bright. And I'm just gonna dab a little, almost like just sketching with my the tip of my brush and just kind of do little kind of semi-circles and things in here. I can pick up some more of that brighter pink if I want to, some mid-tone, whatever. I just want to add a little bit more detail to that butterfly bush. A little bit brighter, bring out some details in it. Okay. And then get that, wipe that out and get some of the green, maybe a little bit more of the brighter green. And if you add that pink to that green, it makes a really neat color. It's kind of a, almost grays it out and it's perfect for the tip of the flower. I'm just gonna dab in some of that, make sure I have a good, maybe let's, Bend it over there so it and I'm gonna bring that out just a little bit more. Some more pink. Nice. You can tell that I like these kind of cone shaped flowers. <laughs> like I have a lot of them in my garden. But they're great for filler because then it Kind of sets off the colors of the other zinnias and things. More round shaped flowers. All right, so I'm just going to get some of this light yellow and add my. Oh, that's still a little bit wet. I'm going to have to wait. Okay, I'm going to have to wait on that. I'll work on. Uh, I don't want to do that one. I can do this one. Okay, I'll work on the yellow flower. So let's get my, I don't know why I put this much yellow out. I don't need this nearly this much. <sighs> put on just a huge amount of yellow. Um, white. The white helps the yellow cover. So, um, and then if you have any of this left over that had that, burnt sienna and and magenta that'll be helpful too okay so I've got a little bit of both on my brush and I'm just gonna start to 
set my brush down and pull in and leave some of that dark color showing. Um, this takes a little practice, so you can practice it on paper if you want. I do have a brush stroke workshop uh, video that has um, all these different brush strokes that you can try out. And this is one of them, this like little mini comma stroke. Just super helpful when you're doing flowers. So back here, you're just barely seeing anything. And then we'll get another layer. And so just each layer, I'm gonna kind of go in between and leave a little bit of that background showing. I don't have to be super Um, super careful but I'm just trying to kind of get them in the right spots now this one the face is kind of facing away from us so I can get a little bit of white with my yellow and do those so I have kind of know where my center is back here because it's pretty high up on the flower so do like two rows and then do your this up here and then the rest of it is going to be dots to fill in the rest of that center of that flower right there all right and then just a few of these petals are kind of coming at us so all we're seeing is like the edges of them so we don't have to do a ton. They can be kind of short and some of them can just be like little lot lines and that's all you have to do. See how that one was just like a little semi circle and that looks like a petal that is facing us. Okay, so we're just gonna do that right there. Fill in any of the big areas and that's how we fill up in that zinnia. And then um, in the center, I'm gonna get some of the kind of coral color and just dab a little bit of that in a circle. That was a little bit orange. A little bit of that in a circle over the top of some of the yellow even if we need to. Okay, looks good. Um, might go a little bit darker, get that burnt umber, burnt sienna I mean and magenta. I didn't need a lot of burnt umber either. I'm kind of wasting some paint today. Uh, got out some colors that I don't really need much of. And you can always kind of touch up, but I, th I think less is more when you're doing these kind of paintings. Um, I really covered up too much of that center, so I'm trying to kind of lift off some of that orange. just do just a little bit of really dark right there right in the center okay that's good let's do that same thing here just kind of a little bit dark right where the center is that is that's going to be and then there's going to be some darkness coming out around it so I'm just going to kind of fill in a little bit of some shadows there get my darker coral. Just make sure I have some darker spots on my flower there before I put in my highlights. Okay. That's good. This one's kind of in full sun even though these are the same color. This one's center is a little bit darker and maybe a little bit more pink in it. So I'm going to get that mid-tone and then get this highlight color that I created with the light yellow. And we'll just start on here and do a layer of petals coming in towards the center. They're all pointing in towards this, so if you kind of just keep that in mind as you're doing this, you won't stay. Just find your center and then point all your petals in towards it. You're good. Some of these petals are bigger down here at the bottom, so I'm gonna make them a little wider. 
They just look bigger because they're closer to us. They're not actually bigger. Okay. How are you doing, hun? Doing what are we doing? Good for time? Yeah, we're doing all right. Oh, yeah. We got time for a butterfly. Barely. <laughs> you were going to cut me off. Yeah. Oops. Got some green. Let me see if I can get that off. Just a damp paper towel here. There we go. All right. I'm going to get a little bit more white. And again, if I kind of go in between, I can get a little bit more layered look. That looks good. And then right in here, they're actually kind of yellow. So I'm going to get the yellow and just dab in some yellow around that. And that's about all I'm going to do with that one. And then this one is a lot of this lighter. lighter peachy color and if I flatten my brush out a little bit I can get a little bit more rounded shape you could also use a filbert for this if you're not enjoying this brush you kinda this one is all in the way you load your brush if you have a brush that's a little too pointy it can be hard to get that kinda rounded shape on the tip of the flower so having a I can kind of do it in two or I can kind of come in it from the side a little bit or just take my time and actually load it right properly okay so there we go and then I'm gonna get a little bit of the mid-tone for the next layer just so that it, they're a little bit different maybe maybe a little bit more white actually Maybe do the opposite. Go a little bit more white. Just so it's a little different. Okay, that's good. Good. Get some yellow. Little yellow bits. And then in the center, I'm just going to I wiped my brush out and I'm just going to use what's left and just do little dots in there. Little teeny tiny dots. Why don't you zoom in so people can see what we're doing here, huh? Please. Okay. Let me get a little bit of the darker color and dab in a little bit of that too. Kind of create a of a center there I'm gonna go a little bit darker because it's not showing up very good so just go one shade darker there we go gonna go in a circle and then right in the middle there I want kind of a dark red right there and you can see we kind of already have that same sort of look here but I can kind of bump it up by dabbing on a little bit more right there this one We've got a little bit of this light light peachy color that's going around the center okay that's good let's do this one this is an anemone these are fun get my black and I might need a little bit more white. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. I, I think I do need more white. So I'm going to get some white. And maybe a little tiny bit of blue. I painted a big one of these um, in my large flower series. If you want to do a more detailed one of these, be sure to check that out because that was a fun one. It's actually one of my most popular large flower series that I've done. I've done several, 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 <laughs> I don't even know how many anymore. I lost count. <laughs> but I'm going to get some glaze and my purple. I'm just going to kind of soften off the top of those and just blend it back. 
The glaze just makes it a little bit more transparent, so it doesn't cover it too totally. And there we go. That white dried almost immediately because I kind of dry brushed it on. So there we go. So now we have our anemone ready to go. And we'll use this black to do the center circle. And then just dab on little dots all the way around. And that white is why this is why we did the white so we could see these because it was kind of dark. It wouldn't show up against the dark, dark. All right, and then I can take some of the light blue, the ultramarine blue and white here, and just kind of use it to sort of separate out some of these petals just slightly. Okay, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna go back up to this one and get some bright yellow and just kind of define some of these that are right here in the front a little bit better. Good. And we can add just like slight highlights. This is kind of 2.0, so, you know, if you're happy with it, just leave it. But this is just adding just a little bit more detail to it if you want to take it to the next level. So, and we can do that with these ones too. In fact, I think we kind of need to on these because this, these petals are all kind of blending, merging together. So get some white, just go one or two shades lighter than we've already done. And we'll just kind of dab off and do tiny little dabs of highlighted petals just here and there. Doesn't have to be very many. It, it'll really help though. And kind of maybe some of these too. Okay, that's good. All right, can use some of the pink and orange and put another layer of detail on the snapdragons that are right there and right here. If they need another layer, those look good. These are all pretty good. Pretty happy with all of that. So let's put in our Cosmos and then our butterfly and we'll be done. All right, so the Cosmos are pretty easy. They're mostly white. So I'm gonna put out the fluid white. And I've gone back to my bigger brush here I may regret that, I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna get some yellow and my white. And I'm going to erase all of this background mess because I have colors, or chalk I should say, in places where I don't wanna see it. So we'll just get that off now and then I can see where I actually want to put these. There are a couple leaves actually. Some There was some purple basil that I had in here too that you can just barely see so I might try to add some of that to the burgundy colors. Really pretty with all these flowers. Okay, so we'll do this one here. This one is kind of facing away from us. Oops. Just like that. And kind of goes flat, so there we go. And yeah, we'll put a purple basil leaf there. And then we'll do this big cosmos right here. little bit wider. 
Sorry, I'm whispering now. I do that when I'm thinking. Okay, so butterfly's going to go down here so I can fit another Cosmo in right here. Right on top of that butterfly bush. Looks good. I love painting those because they come together so quickly. And you let the streaks show, and that kind of just creates the shape as long as you're kind of putting them in the right direction towards the center as you paint them. Anywhere where that background is kind of peeking through kind of creates the highlights and shadows of the flower, so you're not having to do a whole lot to finish it. I'm going to get the burnt sienna in my yellow and I'm going to dab that in the center. This one we're not seeing it, this one we're seeing it. And I'm going to get a little bit of green. Mix that in and do a little bit of green at the bottom, just tapping right like a little semicircle at the bottom. A little bit of darker area just to give it a shadow. It might go a little bit darker than that. Contrast is what gives it depth, so you got to kind of don't be afraid of going dark and light. That's what gives it that depth. See, just going a little bit darker and how much more that popped out of this. I am loving this. I think it's so cute. I love the shape. It's so quirky with that big tall thing happening with this tiny little vase. I think I could have gone a little bit wider with it, so I think I probably went a little bit more narrow than I had to, but um, super fun. Super fun. All right, going to get some of that white, and I'm just going to use it to put in a couple of little really bright highlights on my face. Just in a couple of places. Let's make them oh, I'm going in the right direction there. So I want them kind of going up and down. I feel like that number two round could probably done a better job for me. And I think I'm going to shadow a little bit on my vase right here where this is coming down over because, you know, it's going to have a shadow. So I don't want it that white to go right up to that flower. There we go. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? And then we can put a little shadow kind of underneath some of this light gray. Black glaze. Right in here it's going to be darker where all these flowers and things now see we're using a reference photo that didn't have flowers in it. So we have to think about, okay, if this did have flowers in it, where would those shadows be? And they wouldn't, that highlight wouldn't go as high because it has all these flowers and things that are right here in the way. So we'd see a little bit darker up toward the top. So we just kind of have to keep that in mind when we're playing with our shadows and things. And then I want to go back in with that. This one and just kind of 
fix that because I kind of put a little too much black over the top of it. Okay, that looks good. Alright, I'm going to get a little bit of green and maybe a little bit of that purple, just dark green. You could add burnt umber to it, why not? If you don't have green, you can use your blue and add yellow, obviously. Um, okay, just kind of doing this bit that cups here. It kind of widens out and does a little V shape at the bottom of it, of the flower, kind of a semicircle, and then it has these little bits that come up and help hold those petals in on that, that flower right there. Right, and then I'm going to make a burgundy with purple and magenta and a tiny bit of black. And it makes a really nice burgundy. We had basil out the wazoo. It loves the dark. <laughs> it loves the, I mean, loves the heat. And man, we had basil for days. <laughs> And we let and it go the to bees flower. Love it. Yeah. What? We let it flower out so right. that the bees mm -hmm. are just Oh my nuts. gosh. Yep, they go crazy for it. You they'll defend it. I had one bee that like a bumblebee, which are normally pretty friendly, you know, they don't usually mess with me, but man, he was not having it. He did not want me near his basil. <laughs> and last year he chased me all the way to the porch. <laughs> Like, this is mine. Yeah. Because usually I can just back off and kind of keep going. But he was like, nope, nope, nope. You need a... Way back there. Way back. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. You are still too close. I just kept buzzing my head. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, dude. You can have it. I'm not trying to take your basil. I was trying to take his basil. But... <laughs> Like, I'll come back later. <laughs> okay, adding a little bit of highlight. Um, beautiful. Just anywhere where you think you need some leaves or anything. I'm going to maybe make this purple instead of green or add. I don't know if it's going to show up enough, though. Yeah, kind of does. All right. Let's do a butterfly. And I think this butterfly bush, speaking of butterfly, I think I'm going to use some of this to darken up around the base and just dab it here and there in here to give it a little bit more depth because it's kind of flat looking right now so this will kind of help give it a little bit more structure there okay better better anywhere that you have a problem area and you're painting and you're like ah, that just doesn't look right look at the values first because generally that's where your problem is usually is you just have gotten to where you're like or even take a photograph of it in black and white and then um, see what it looks like in black and white because um, most of the time it's just that you haven't, you don't have any dark, dark areas in a certain place. And so you just need to go back in and add some shadows like I'm doing here. And then you'll, uh, the lighter areas will look right, you know, after you add the shadows back in. So I'm going to. Um, get some of this green here and add some green to this snapdragon up here. We didn't have any green going out to it, and this guy doesn't have its stem anymore because it kind of got covered up over here. So, and then I'm gonna go back in with this yellow flower, and I'm going really fast because I'm just trying to get this done in two hours. So, I apologize. I know I'm going fast, but you can pause it and fast back backtrack to see what I'm doing. All right, see that nice pop of yellow here, and then we have like shades of the yellow here, but that's really the only place we had that 
bright yellow except for maybe like right here in those flowers um, in the centers which I'm gonna get a little bit of white in my that yellow and just go in here and dab on some brighter highlights in the centers of those flowers there to give them a little pop um, and I'm gonna get some of that green a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm gonna go in and dab in around the outside with a little bit more of that darker color this time kind of going all around it and then maybe a little bit of it on these little bits that are coming out here on this back side of that flower and if you want to you can add see this is this camera has moved over to my lap I was just showing my lap it's I don't know what's going on with this arm it keeps doing that to me um, What am I thinking? Oh yeah, butterfly, okay, let's do that. And you can call this good right now if you wanna stop. So I think I'm going to, I'll go ahead and leave it kind of where it was. I think it, I think it fits okay, but you could move it somewhere else if you wanted. Um, but he, let's draw him, let's draw him so we get the shape right. He's pretty simple. He's just in here, right here, and out there. And I need to make sure that I'm not covering over anything important when I do him. You know, if I have something that I don't want covered up. We're covering a lot of this delphinium here with him, but I think it'll be all right. Just a little bit of that butterfly bush there. What are you laughing about? Uh -huh. I'll put up the question here in a second. Okay. Okay, let me get a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of that magenta. And there's some blue here too, but I'm just going to kind of use this burnt umber and magenta color to sort of base out the shape. What's the, sh what's the question? Kind of put it on screen because it's so good. Okay. Could you put a tank there instead of a butterfly? <laughs> Jazz, do not encourage him. <laughs> I love that. Was that is that your new screen name? Are you Jazz? Did you create another dummy identity just to leave comments on the Facebook lives? <laughs> Bring back Stigman. <laughs> we do need to. I I agree, Andy. I I don't know what. I I think I was trying. Okay, well I can tell you exactly what was happening. If you watch some of our older videos, where you know they do the like the preview. For some reason, they would always pick Stickman. Because always. he was the best. Always, it was like I don't know why, but I would, you know, go back and check. Oh, okay, I left that brown in that brush. That was bad. So now it's gonna be crispy. Oh well. Um, that is, that is dry. Um, I added a little white to that too to kind of highlight it. I'm not gonna do this super realistic because none of the rest of this is super realistic. So we're just gonna kind of go with the flow and make this. Uh, so the algorithm was picking a section of the video where it was stick doing man a pre pre preview probably 20 oh, probably about 30 percent of the time oh easily yeah easily 
Uh, yeah, and I think it was because it was happening at a certain point. Usually when he would take it to dry, when, I would do it. So yeah, I, I watched some other videos, and they were like, yeah, and they were talking about, yeah, I remember when YouTube would just select a certain point for you, and it was like a certain time stamp. So we must have been pretty regular about when we did that. So anyways. I think so. I don't know. Yes, pre stick man. <sighs> Burnt sienna, yellow, orange, or yellow and green here. This is what I've got going on. Um, yeah. Well, I was doing it at the end, and then I've just kind of been, because we don't do Saturdays, I just, I have no time. You know, I try to, I mean, really, if he dries, it's the only time that I have to do it. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah. It was good times. I know. It was fun. Stick man. A little, um, getting burnt umber here. I'm just going to use that. I kind of, you can see I added a little shadow there to the one side of the body. And body is green. I love the color of this butterfly. I don't know what kind it is, but it's really cool. Okay, I'm going to let you grab a little bit of this green and use it up here and just kind of run it over. Just dry brushing. Don't have a lot of paint on here. So it's just kind of going on and streaking a little color on there. And then get the ultramarine blue. And some white. I still had a little bit of that green in here, so it's going to create a kind of a tealish blue. Might go a little bit darker than that. There we go. Isn't this beautiful? Love it. Love it. Okay, so we're going to just do all the kind of build up the house and then we'll come in and put the decor on you know we got to get the butterfly built up and then we can come in and just do the last little bits of detail and it'll be all there ready to go there's not a whole lot of detail on the head so i'm gonna do a whole lot there and I'm just going to take my water and wipe off my outline so I can see what I've got. Because sometimes it can be hard to see. Okay. So that's not bad. I think I like that. And now we'll just take some... And I've, I'm using the two round. I'm going to get the black and the burnt sienna. Or burnt umber, I mean. So this is where the burnt umber comes in. I knew we had it there for a reason. And just try to <clears throat> ping pong back and forth, figure out your shape. I'm gonna kind of go a little darker right near the body on this side, a little bit darker right there. And there's not a, sometimes the butterflies will have a dark line around the top, but this one doesn't. So you can do that if you want though, but I'm gonna do one kind of, um, no, I think, so I'm just going to look at the features that are prominent. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I said that and so breathed in. <coughs> I hate that. <coughs> okay. Look at the prominent features on our butterfly. I'm thinning this out so that I can work quickly. Roll that brush to a point so I got a good little tiny point. I might need a smaller brush, but we'll see. I think I can do it with this one. Um, all right. And so we're just going to kind of say here and here, there's kind of this little, uh, S shape and little round things on either side of it. Okay. Start there and then a dab here and a dab here and a dab there, a little V shape right there and there. Kind of try to mimic it. If you do them, if you go back and forth like this, it kind of is less difficult to keep them in line. 
And then I'm just going to kind of go along the edge there. And go along the edge here. And then do little dabs kind of pointing in towards the wing. There. Honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as you kind of get them symmetrical, right? Some of them are kind of like this shape. Okay, that's close enough. And then I'll do some lines. So some of these lines coming in here will help kind of connect everything and soften it all up. Keep these small. If you're having trouble getting your lines thin, you need to thin out your paint. That's usually the problem. Your paint is too thick. So check that first. Okay. Okay, and then just dabs around the back side here. All the way around, and then another set in between. And then a bigger rounds, more like circles. And then lines. Okay, then we have a butterfly, it's amazing, hmm. do some lines coming in, just faint little lines, again I'm not, I don't want to overdo this because everything else is very kind of soft and impressionist, so if I get super detailed with this and fussy with it, it won't match going to get the white and I'm just going to come through and add some little dots of white here and there. Um, there's just a few little really bright white spots here and there. And this can also kind of help if you got one of your lines wrong or you did something that you didn't like. You can Kind of just put a white dot over it or, you know, it'll help kind of camouflage. There's some white dots here and here. And then, or they're kind of farther out there. And then all along the back the base. So I'm just going to kind of do a shape along the edge. Little semicircles going out. And then there's other little lines inside. All right. And there's a little little tiny I wiped off most of it little tiny highlight right there and on the head and then I might do just like a little bit of gray and do a couple little antennae coming out. You can't see them, just make them a different color or a little darker or a little lighter so one or the other. There we go. Um, I might get my white now that I have this round brush, bright, bright white here, it's fluid, so it's going to go on thin and I don't have to add white water to it. And just add 
some streaks to my petals here. Just a few spots and anywhere else that you need a little highlight so maybe maybe those needed a little highlight maybe maybe on this anemone I need a little bit of, of a blue shadow on the center of that flower and get this smooth. I've got a kind of a jaggedy line there. Smooth that out. Kind of brought that out a little far. that good. Another fun addition to, oh wait, I should say a little bit of burnt umber in that black and we'll just use it right here. I'm just using my finger to kind of Made that out. Okay, there we go. We needed that. Just right there, really dark. And then kind of do it in the middle of where we did that shadow before. Right there. And I'm going to go a little bit. I'm going to get some glaze and go a little bit darker right here because I kind of think wiped off some of the burnt sienna when I was painting in this earlier. So I want it a little bit darker just right in that area too. I'm just using my finger to push it around and blend it in a little bit. Okay. I don't like that, so I'm going to get the burnt sienna and a little bit of the burnt umber. And try with that. Let's get the color that's there and just use that instead of trying to do a glaze. Okay, that's better. All right, now I can sign it. <laughs> what? Super chat. Super chat. Yay. We've got like a little herd here tonight. Nice. <clears throat> All right, we'll start off at the top. Maybe. I thought I expected it. I'm going to give a little bit of highlight right here. <clears throat> Love this face. Happy New Year. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Very much for that generous hey. donation. Super chat. Happy New Year to you. And then Glad to be back. From another Cindy says, Thanks for all you do. Not to be outdone. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of <But> the Cindy's. <laughs> this flower buds for oh, you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Um, that would have been perfect if you dad joked that up like I just did. So, <laughs> <clears throat> for all you do, this flower buds for you. <laughs> oh, got it, got, got it. it. And then another one from Carol. Thinking of spring with the foot of snow. We needed this, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely needed it this week. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> and then from Mary, a new oh, first-time wow. uh, live you, watcher. And Sweet. She's, uh, she said that, she, that you've inspired her, to, inspired her to start painting. Yay. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, so that is awesome. Thank you so much to Cindy and Cindy and Carol and Mary for your 
generous donations. Yes. And um, I was going to say, I have a beginner um, series, so you want to check that out. Um, if you're brand new to painting with acrylics, just watch those videos through. Try try out some of those lessons because that will really help get you kick-started. Um, it goes over all the basics. And then, because um, some things like I don't go over in every single video because we're, you know, trying to get it done um, in a time crunch. Um, like tonight, you know, where we've got a pretty complicated painting and we've just barely got it done in two hours. So um, I wasn't sure. This is this would be a three hour painting on another night, <laughs> you know, <laughs> easily. Um, so and if it takes you longer, don't try to yeah. don't try to match up my speed with yeah. yours. I've been painting for 30 years. If you're new to this, it's going to take you much longer. And that is totally normal. Um, it's going to take me a whole lot longer to do anything new, um, you know, learn to play piano or whatever than somebody who's been painting for playing for 30 years. So um, just kind of know that going in, you can't compare, you know, how fast I'm doing mine. Plus you're having to stop and start and listen and, you know, that kind of thing. So if I was doing this in a classroom setting, I would be stopping and pausing and letting you catch up and things like that, which we don't have the time for here. Um, so, yeah, just a uh, little... Uh, I, I hear people saying that all the time, a little disclaimer, you know, definitely don't don't expect to get this done as quickly as I'm doing it here because um, I already know what I'm going to do and that kind of thing. You know, I've, I've got kind of an idea of where I'm going with it and you're just having to wait to hear what to do next, you know, so there's no way for you to get it done as fast as I am. Um, just adding a few little details there. They are finding the treasure right now. Okay. All right. We're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday. I'll be just back from Disney World. I'm going, I'm leaving tomorrow. And <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how awake she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tuesday may be interesting, but please come because it's going to be, I know it's a really simple looking landscape, but we're going to have some fun playing with colors and trying different underlayers. And um, we may do end up with two or three different paintings uh, of a simple nature. And I'll kind of show you how to play up um, landscapes and make them a little bit more interesting. So be sure to tune in for that, hopefully. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.